Quebec City feels like stepping into the pages of a fairy tale. Old Quebec is full of cobblestone streets, plenty of charm, and reminders that the city is steeped in history. It's a city I love spending time in, and in this video, I'm going to share some fantastic spots to check out on your next visit, including a real hidden gem in the Arts District. This is the Morin Center. It was built in 1808 on the site of a former military facility from the French regime. And this building is one of the first prisons in Quebec. They house men, women, and children here. Women gave birth to newborns, and the oldest convicted prisoner was just seven years old. If you look closely at the windows, you'll see that there are holes above and below. That's where there used to be bars when this was a prison and have obviously since been removed. Something else that's been removed is the balcony that used to extend over the front door where they used to hang people. And inside the front lobby, you can see that it's double height. That's because the second floor used to extend across, leading out to the balcony where people would meet their fate. Now it's a cultural center where they have a beautiful library of mostly English language books. It's also the home of the Literary and Historical Society of Quebec, which was founded in 1824, making it the oldest society of its kind in Canada. Inside, you can see two of the preserved prison cells, including a prison museum, to give you an idea of what this building was like when it operated as a prison. This pretty shop is the longest running grocery store in North America. It's called J.A. Moison and it's been operating since 1871. It's named after its first owner, Jean Alfred, and he was only 23 years old when he opened his first grocery store. That was in a different location, but since 1871, he was here. It's changed owners over the years, but through all that time, it's been serving the community, and it's now still a great place where you can eat inside and have a drink or a snack, or I think the perfect place to stock up for picnic with meat and cheese, drinks, and of course, lots of candy. This is the Notre Dame Basilica Cathedral, and it was first built in 1647. In 1664, it became the first parish church of the colony, and it was promoted to a cathedral in 1674. It was destroyed during the Siege of Quebec in 1759, and then rebuilt on its original foundations. The Citadel in Quebec City is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's hard to miss because of its size. It's one-fifth of old Quebec, and it's still an active military base, so because of that, you can't just walk around on your own. You have to be part of a guided tour. It's also the location of the second official residence of the Governor General of Canada, and you can tour that residence as well. The word Citadel comes from the Italian word meaning small city. The idea is that the citadel, or the smaller city, protects the big city, which in this case is of course Quebec City. If the big city gets attacked, it can be absorbed by the small city, and they can just shut the gates and live safely inside its walls. And at one time, around when the citadel was first built, it had enough supplies, depending on the number of people, to survive for up to seven years. Thankfully, this citadel has never been attacked. The walls were built between 1820 and 1831, and the buildings inside from 1831 to about 1850. It was built by the British, and before that, there were a handful of buildings built by the French. Today, it's the base of the Royal 22nd Regiment. The motto of the regiment is Je me souviens, which means I remember. It's the same motto as the province of Quebec, and the words that you'll see on all Quebec license plates. For the province, the motto has a more general meaning of remembrance, but for the regiment, it's much more specific and is meant more like lest we forget. For the regiment, Je me souviens refers to remembering the members that have died on active duty. Next to the chapel, there is a smaller building that's not open to visitors, and it contains a book called the Book of Remembrance. And inside the Book of Remembrance is written all of the names of all the fallen soldiers. Every day, a member of the regiment goes inside and they turn the page, and they read the names of all of the soldiers on the page, which is about 20 names. And they say, je me souviens, I remember, which I find very moving. In addition to the guided tours, there's also a museum here where you can learn more about Canada's military history. And if you're here at noon, every day they fire a cannon. There's also a fantastic view down to Chateau Frontenac because the citadel is perched above the city that it was built to protect. to slow 
down a little bit. I think that this park is pretty hard to beat, especially at sunset, as you can see. It's one of my favorite spots in the city. We've got the Citadel behind us, Chateau Frontenac in front of us. The setting sun is beautifully illuminating Chateau Frontenac and you get to sit on this grassy hill that gently slopes down to the St. Lawrence River, watching the boats go by. It's a great place to bring a picnic or enjoy a beverage. Just relax. This is the Fortifications of Quebec National Historic Site, and right now I'm in a place called Artillery Park. And just behind me is a building that dates all the way back to 1712. It was built by the French to house their soldiers. At that time, about 100 soldiers lived here. Later, during the British regime, it was a place for officers to live. Now you can step back in time and see the kitchen, where the British officers' bedrooms were, and the superintendent's quarters. And our favorite activity here has got to be the bowling. So don't miss out on the bowling and see if you can hit as many pins as Mark. on the lovely porch at Maison Henry Stewart. Henry Stewart, after this house's most notable owners, William Henry, who built it in 1849, and later the Stewart sisters who lived here for over 70 years. And this is really a lesser known spot in Quebec City. And as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the dreamiest if you love the Victorian era like I do. William Henry was a shipbuilder and a wood merchant. And though he built it in 1849, he never actually actually lived here, he rented it out fully furnished. It was later purchased by the Stewart sisters in 1917 and they lived here until 1987. The elder sister was 98 years old when she passed away and she lived here right until the end. So they obviously loved this house. They also loved the Victorian era and they have restored the house now to the period of about 1922, which is when the Stewart sisters first kind of redecorated and all of the furnishings, all of the artifacts in the house are original to the house. They're the real things that the Stuart sisters used. And they came from a wealthy family. They were part of the English bourgeoisie in Quebec City and they inherited everything from their uncle. And right down to the dishes that they use, they have different beautiful sets of dishes and everything has the coat of arms of the Stuart family, a famous uh, Scottish family. And they really lived in a lot of ways as if they were in the Victorian era for all of their lives, right down to a message plate right by the front door where visitors could leave uh, a card if the Stuart sisters were not at home. They also had afternoon tea from 4.30 to 5.30 every single day in the front room of the house where you can still see the sofa where they sat and sometimes they would entertain visitors. The sisters were named Mary Loretta and Adele and because they were part of the bourgeoisie, they didn't need to work, but they did a lot of volunteer work. And Mary Loretta, for example, became a member of the British Empire for her work with the Red Cross. Adele absolutely loved to read. In fact, she read four to five books a week, and you can still see some of her books on the shelf in what became her study. She was an important member of the historical and literary society here, and she would make recommendations for which books they should acquire for their library. This style of cottage is called a Quebecois ornate cottage and I really appreciate that all of the furnishings and items that you see inside are true to the house. Unlike some museums, they might be of the period but they were brought in from elsewhere. Here, they're all things that the sisters used over the course of 70 years so it really feels personal and when you walk inside you really have the sense that this place is frozen in time. So if like me, you're somebody who loves to imagine what different times in history would be like, then this is a really dreamy place to get that feeling. Something I discovered that I definitely have in common with the Stewart sisters, as I'm sure you do, is a love of travel. They spent three months of every year traveling in Europe, except for the war years, and you can still see the large trunk that they used in the house, and it's fun to look at it and just think of all the places it's been and all the miles it's logged. The house is very charming, but I have to say for me, I think the best part of being here is that they are continuing on the tradition of the Stewart sisters having daily afternoon tea by serving Earl Grey with homemade lemon cake. 
here on the patio on a hot day like today, it's respite from the sun. If it's raining, you're still covered and you can look out at the beautiful garden with all the flowers. And for me, as someone who loves drinking out of a cup and saucer, I just can't imagine a better place in Quebec City to sit here and enjoy and imagine that it's 1922. Clearly, there are many ways to spend your time in Quebec City. I'd love to hear which of these spots interest you most, and if you have any recommendations of your own, please leave a comment and let me know. Quebec City is also not far from the Gaspé region of Quebec, which is an absolutely wonderful area to visit. We did a 10-day road trip all around the Gaspé Peninsula and documented it all, so I'll link that video series in the description box if you'd like to see, as well as other videos we've made about Quebec City. You can follow me on Instagram where I post more content, and I've made a highlight devoted to Quebec City. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and see you in our next video.